What's up you guys, it's Erin. Welcome back to another video. Today we have a really exciting one. I've been wanting to film this for a few weeks, but I wanted to make sure that I had all my thoughts together, I had done all my research so this video could be helpful to you guys because I know this product has been blowing up again recently. And it's a review of the Dyson Airwrap. This is just the case. But you know, that really, really expensive uh, Dyson tool that everyone's been talking about? Yeah, I have it. Make sure you stay tuned because I'm gonna show you how I did this style with my hair, give you all my tips and tricks and my thoughts and whether it is worth the high price tag, whether you need it or not because that seems to be the debate. I know this was popular a while ago and now it seems like it's blowing up on TikTok again. Um, but before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that post notification bell. If this is your first video of mine, welcome. I do all sorts of beauty related videos, mainly makeup focused, but I also really like skincare, lifestyle, a little bit of fashion. And I just try to keep it really cool and casual and I hope you'll subscribe. Before I take you back to the hair tutorial, I just want to take you through a few facts about the Dyson. I came prepared because while I've been learning about how best to use it, I also want to have all the specs for you guys because this is not a purchase I take lightly and it's not even a purchase I was planning to do or make, if you will. Um, if you don't know, this product formerly called the Dyson Airwrap Styler Complete is $549.99 retail. And it doesn't really go, I haven't seen it on sale more than like maybe 20% off. The reason I got this, I was never planning on spending any kind of money like that, but my sister, who mind you has hair this short, um, maybe last year or sometime had a bunch of Ulta points to blow. There was a 20% off that included Dyson and she was feeling frisky and just went for it. Well, long story short, it sat in her bathroom for months and months and months. It was actually at my parents' house and my mom was just using the dryer and the round brush. She wasn't really using any of the other attachments. And I went home, I forgot all my styling, um, like, I didn't bring my curling iron or straightener or anything. So I ended up using the Dyson and I, I was just intrigued by it. I really didn't actually like it at first, but she was like, you know, I'll give it to you at a huge discount and if you want it, you can take it. And I, a lot of people messaged me when I posted about it saying they really, really loved it. So I pulled the trigger and I've been trying it for the last few weeks. Let's just get into what this baby is supposed to be able to do for $500. It should be able to like walk your dog, but it's supposed to be able to curl, wave, and smooth and voluminize your hair. It recently did go viral on TikTok again. I know this has been out for like a couple of years now, but um, it's sold out everywhere. When I was looking up specs for it, it sold out every single website I looked on. So it's definitely a hot commodity again. It's supposed to create style without extreme heat um, and protect your hair from like direct heat damage that other styling tools can do. Um, it has three airflow speeds, four heat settings, including the cold shot, which I will get to. And it's supposed to have like a negative ion technology that reduces static in your hair. I'm sorry, I have a really shaky table and this is heavy for my like little shaky um, card table that I film on. I literally film on a card table that we got for our wedding. I need to get something better. See, it just shakes every time I move something. But it comes in a nice carrying case. It's very heavy duty, kind of, I don't know if it's real leather, but it's leather feeling on the outside. And then the inside is like a velvet and you're supposed to be able to keep it in here. I'll just take you through what everything is. So here is the main attachment and it has a big cord that there's a place to store it. And there's a few buttons here. There's the unlock and lock button that is for taking on and off attachments. And then here are three buttons that you can use. This is the flow of your air, the lowest and the highest, and then your heat setting from lowest to highest. This is how you turn it on. You just hit this up here. And then when you have it on, what you do, like when you're curling your hair, is what's called a cold shot. And giving a cold shot is supposed to kind of set your curl or style in place um, before you remove the brush. So what you do to give a cold shot is just hold this up and then the air turns cool. Then we have a few attachments here. There are two curling attachments. These are the 1.2 inch barrels and the 1.6 inch barrels. These are meant to curl your hair 
and they both have two attachments to take your hair in opposite directions so like for me um, I like to curl my hair away from my face so you'll see that I use both attachments and so I can depending on the side of my head I just switch them out so I can have the curls going the direction I want these are obviously for looser, like beachier waves, and these, which is what I use, are for a little bit tighter curl or your curl's gonna fall, so I just prefer to use the smaller barrel. Then you have the round volumizing brush. This says it's best for fine, flat hair to give it body, and it creates tension to really bounce up your hair, and I really agree with that. I have a very fine, flat, um, hair that just doesn't like to hold a style and this definitely helps with that and I love curling my bangs with this. You have the dryer here which is self-explanatory. It's just a Dyson air dryer attachment and anytime I do a style I start my hair with this guy. And this is actually called the pre-styling dryer because you're supposed to partially dry your hair before you do any style with it. And then there are two brush attachments. This one is the firm smoothing brush. It says it's for frizz prone hair. And then this one is the soft smoothing brush, which is like a smooth blow dry. Um, it's supposed to be gentler with these little tips on it where this one does not. Sorry if I'm looking down, there's just a lot of info and I want to give you guys the correct info and the names of things and what things are for, etc. So that's where all the attachments are. I definitely got this because I like to curl my hair and that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today. Um, but yeah, let's just get into the tutorial and then I will give you more tips on my thoughts and how I use this. I tried to keep my hair as kind of damp as possible so I could show you guys the full picture. So I still need to brush it out after my shower, clearly, like this <laughs> top of my hair. I'm gonna use some of this Rio Geo leave-in. This is the Rosarco Milk Reparative Leave-In Conditioning Spray. I'm just gonna spray some of that in my hair, especially because it kind of dried while I was doing my makeup. It was kind of unavoidable. Um, I just wanna make sure that I get my hair nice and brushed out. I should have brought my wet brush. I have a wet brush that I use out of the shower upstairs, but I didn't bring it down to my beauty room. But actually this stuff works really well and I used the shampoo from this line today, so I figured it'd be a good day to use that leave-in conditioner. What I'm gonna do today is dry my hair and then curl it with the 1.2 inch barrel curlers. And while we do this, I'll kind of give you a tutorial and what I have learned doing this. But before we get into using these curlers, what I always recommend you do, at least what I have learned and what has worked best for me over the past couple weeks of using this, is to always use the blow dryer. This is called the pre-styling dryer. And I recommend getting your hair maybe 60% dry before doing any styling with like a round brush, a smooth brush, because that will ensure that your hair gets completely dry and you're not trying to it just makes the styling a lot easier. So we're gonna do that first. So I have the little, I don't know what you call this part, the main part, and it just sticks on there nicely. It's super user friendly. And then when you wanna take it off, you just unclip like this. And yeah, really nice. So I'm gonna use the highest heat and the highest air setting. And then here's the cool shock buttons that I talked about earlier. So I'm gonna dry my hair like about 60% and the main thing I focus on is the roots because when you're styling your hair, you're more focused on the ends. So I like to make sure the roots are really dry before I start with any of these styling attachments. A little side note. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I have really fine, straight, thin hair. And what I find like helps with volume is kind of blow drying the opposite direction that my hair would lay, you know what I mean? Like I'm blow dry this way, and then this way, and then upside down. All right, I'm looking really good. Uh, I got my hair, mainly the roots, dry, and then the rest of my hair is partially dry. I'm gonna brush it out again. I really do like the um, blow dry attachment. I feel like 
for my fine hair I've never really needed much to dry my hair my hair dries quickly no matter what I do even if I'm not blow drying it but I do I do prefer drying it because my stylist told me she feels like for people with oily hair like mine oily straight hair when you dry your hair and get it off your scalp and really dry the roots that helps um, with oil production I find that this is a really good dryer the thing I really like about it is you know when you're drying your hair upside down and you get your hair like sucked into the dryer and it like sucks into a little ball and burns that little portion of hair and you have to pull it out of your hair dryer that doesn't happen with this this doesn't this doesn't like pull the air comes out one way and it doesn't pull the other way so I really like that and I like that it's just all in one when I come down here to do my hair I can come down with wet hair and then dry it with this attachment and then continue styling my hair I should mention I do not have any styling products in my hair. I just washed it um, and put in this leave-in conditioner. I will put in some texture spray and hairspray after the fact, but I, with my really fine hair, just don't like to weigh it down with much product. Sometimes I will put some of the Amica Volumizing Mousse in, which I really like, but even that I just use a little bit because products just weigh my hair down really quickly. All right, so I have the 1.2 inch barrels here in comparison and here are the 1.6 inch barrels. I personally find that the 1.2 inch is best for my hair, particularly because my hair is really fine and smooth. It just has never held a curl super well and I find that this can make somewhat of a tight curl. But I usually leave the ends out and it falls over time so I like to keep it tighter at first and then it will fall over time. I'm just going to take off the dryer attachment and then like I mentioned earlier these have two because they have one that goes in each direction. I prefer to curl my hair outwards so I like my curls to go away from my face and that's how I've always done it and so you have a curling option for each side. This was definitely a learning curve for me the first time I used this I just kind of wung it. I was at my parents house and I didn't remember my curling iron or my straightener that I usually curl my hair with and I was just winging it so that didn't turn out super well. I'm gonna clip my hair half up while we talk. That did not turn out super well for me. It was frustrating. It took me a long time. And then I decided to buy it from my sister. I don't know what came over me. A lot of you guys messaged me after I posted on my Instagram that I really didn't like it saying that you did like yours. And so I decided I'll give it a try. I brought it home and I watched Jen Atkins tutorial slash YouTube video on it. And if you don't know who she is, she's a celebrity hairstylist and she also is the founder of The Way Hair Care. And her tips were very, very helpful. She always recommends holding it like this, so upside down. And then what this does is it kind of, it sucks your hair in without you even trying. So the first time I did it, I just kind of held my hair here and let it grab it and then pulled it in. Surprisingly, my hair never really got tangled, but I just didn't love how the curls looked when I did that. What she recommended to get more of that beachy wave with a little bit of a straight end is to hold here and kind of, sometimes I wrap it around before I turn it on, and then you can just leave an end out and turn it on. Just a couple seconds. And then I hit the cool shot button. And, that, and that's a curl. Sometimes it takes me a few minutes to get the hang of it and it's hard for me to see in my monitor. But what I do after a couple seconds is I, I hold this up to get the cool shot and that's supposed to help set your curl. And so that's kind of how I started doing it. I really like how the curl looks. I think you see a lot of people that just do this and I find that I don't like how that looks. You get a really curly bottom and kind of a straight top. I like holding it how Jen Atkin recommended. I find that you get that bouncy beachy wave and I actually really like it. So we have one piece done. I like to start with half my hair up because it just makes it less daunting. And the one thing with this is kind of have to do small-ish sections and 
if you're not careful, this can grab other hair that's down. So it's, it's just easiest to have half your hair up. And then you can start it and then wrap it either way. Just hold it a few seconds. Let me hit the cool shot. Let it cool down. And then there you have it. Now I'm ready to do the bottom half on the other side, so I'm going to switch out attachments. So the right side of my head is a little more difficult, and I feel like for right-handed people like me, it's kind of a common issue. It's easy when you can hold your right hand over your head across, and this just is the easiest way to do it. This side is harder for me, so what I like to do is kind of wrap it around and then turn it on it's just the angle of your arm is just it's a harder side to do if you're right-handed and vice versa if you're left-handed yeah like i just i'm getting better at this side but um I'm just not quite as good at it, but I think that's very like common. So I'm gonna do these bottom two pieces. See? Okay, that's the other thing. I don't have as much control with my hand being cranked like this on my right side, so I find that I don't, like the hair that I already have curled sometimes sneaks in there and I kinda have to hold it away. That is something that I've like found to be the biggest pain it's not that big of a deal but you do have to be careful not to let the hair that you already curled kind of sneak in there because this will grab whatever hair is nearby and I just don't have as much control on this side till now that I do that so sometimes I hold it sometimes I hold this hair away and sometimes if the end is curlier than I want what I'll do is I will take it and just, while it's still warm, kind of flatten it out, and that will help. Do I have one more piece? I think I have one more piece on this side. All right, the bottom's done. I like to spray it with a little hairspray right off the back because my hair just doesn't hold great. I'm gonna use a Sebastian Shaper Plus hairspray. This is almost gone. And then I'm gonna speed you up to do some of my top layer and then we'll go through how I kind of do the front pieces together. All right, so I'm just gonna start with the top of my hair. I brought a mirror over down here, so if I look down here, that's why, because I just felt like I couldn't see my hair and how it was looking in the monitor. But um, I'm gonna continue around like we said. Sometimes if you don't leave the ends out successfully, they get super curly and it's just not cute. been three minutes and that half of my head is done that side is easier though for me so let's switch and do the other side as you can see it looks really good I just love how fluffy and bouncy and beachy like my hair has never did I miss a piece no my hair has never looked like so just effortlessly curly a lot of times when I do with my straightener there's a crimp up here or with a uh, curling iron it just looks I don't know. I just love how these curls look. I've never been able to achieve curls that look, I don't know, just so like that wavy look that I've always wanted. It's the first time I've ever been able to do it, so you tell me if that's worth it.
All right, I'm doing the front piece over here. This front piece on the right, I struggle to do because I can't really wrap and hold a piece out. Maybe I can. We've been getting better at it, but it's more difficult logistically to like hold the end out without it sucking in the rest of my hair. See, it's trying to suck in the rest of my hair. That is the issue. So maybe if I push my hair back, the rest of my hair that's done. Like I don't want it to ruin the pieces that I already did. So sometimes I just have to let it do its thing and then hold the rest of my hair, but then I don't get the end piece left out, if you know what I mean. But you know, you can always straighten the end piece. Oh, I know what I can do. Okay, if you ever have this issue, I saw this on one of the Dyson tutorials, you can turn the, like I'm gonna turn the air blast, whatever, the little button with the fan sign down to a low. That'll help it not be so powerful. So you can see when you don't, when I'm not able to hold the end out, you get these curly kind of ends, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Like I can flatten them out, you see. Um, but at first they look a little bit crazy and like a little more curly cue than I am going for, you know what I mean? But I still really like how it looks. I think we're done like literally it does not take long at all once you get the hang of it and once you kind of get the gist of it I feel like if you're having issues with it like sucking up nearby pieces just turn down the fan and that helps a lot um, I'm just going to hairspray the top and once the what I like to do once it kind of sets is just take a brush this side is definitely already set and just brush it out and then I can see if there's any pieces I missed or need to touch up it definitely is more of that bouncy like just beautiful wave like I've never had such like brushed out pretty looking curls before and they don't feel like crunchy like when you do them with a curling iron and then I'm going to take some of my Amica undone volume in that texture spray All right, and, and that is what my hair looks like with the 1.2 inch barrel curlers, which is definitely my favorite attachment. It's what kind of drew me to this and what for me makes it worth it. But I'll go into my thoughts on the rest of these attachments. As you can see, I really love the 1.2 inch barrel curlers and I love the dryer. The uh, My other favorite attachment is definitely the round brush. I love to, I kind of have curtain bangs are kind of grown out, but I love to curl my bangs with this as well as like if I don't want to do a full curl style and have something a little more low maintenance that I don't feel like I have to touch up at all because these will fall out a little bit and I can easily touch up pieces if I want or I can just let it fall and it will look really natural over time. I recently curled my hair like this for a wedding and my hair looked really good at the end of the night but it had fallen but for reference like my hair with a curling iron or a wand it it falls as well and I just like how my curls look better with this Dyson but anyways if I want to um, use this I can curl my bangs with it and I, I also make sure I dry my hair partially with the blow dryer and then what I like to do is take it um, and wrap it around and then kind of just I like wrap my hair halfway around and then just kind of brush it through and dry it and it gives it like that fresh blowout look rather than just drying your hair. It gives it more of a style with it dried and then I don't need to use a flat iron or anything like that. The other two attachments, the brushes that I went over earlier, I don't really 
use them. I don't really see the need for them. I do have um, two other, like I have the Hot Tools round brush as well as the Amica one, which is my other favorite. And I would reach for those over a brush kind of attachment like this because I already have very silky fine hair. And this just isn't something that's necessary to me. So I think they're nice. I've tried them both. This one is more for um, coarse frizzy hair and this one is more gentle for fine hair like mine. But yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on the attachments and how I style my hair. And let's just get into my final thoughts on the Dyson. All right, I've given you my tutorial, I've given you my tips and tricks and some of my thoughts, but I need to tell you, is this worth $550? My initial, my initial thought was no, I would never have bought this for $550, I would never buy this, but now that I've tried it and I can get curls like this and I've gotten so many more compliments on my hair than I ever have in my life and my, my curls look literally better, it just gives like the most beachy soft fluffy waves that I've never been able to achieve before I think if I didn't get this like at less than half off from my sister I would have used an Ulta coupon and Ulta points on this I really do think that there is something special about this look I have tried I've tried um, round brushes dryer brushes from multiple brands I love my Amica one don't get me wrong but this just does all in one. I have the Kristen S curling iron. This curls my hair much, much better in a much prettier way, at least for my talents. Um, and as you've seen, I really love my T3 straightener. That was in my like November favorites. Uh, and I like to curl my hair with that, but I just like how my curls look better. They look prettier and I'm able to achieve a more effortless curl like just doesn't take any skill. Once you get the hang of it, it really does not take any skill. So my answer is yes. I think this is worth it at a discount. If you have problems with styling your hair, with volume, with your hair just, your curls just never look how they want. But a caveat that I have really fine, thin, straight hair. So I don't know how it works for curly, thick hair, anything like that. That's just my, you know, experience. But am I a Dyson believer now? I think I really am. I've been really, really impressed with this since I've tried it. And it's what I've been using to style my hair since I got it like a month ago maybe. The only con I see is like this guy is so bulky you're not going to travel with it. I have taken the main attachment with the curlers um, in my travel bag just for like a weekend trip. I haven't flown with it yet so I can't say like how bulky it feels in my suitcase. But ultimately I would want this both of these, um, the round brush and the dryer if I was going to travel. And I wish it came with a more compact traveling case. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but if I'm going to spend $550 on something, I want it to be safe when I travel. It's definitely not, not the most compact, but like if you're going to travel with a hair dryer, a straightener, and a curling iron, it kind of replaces all three of those. So, you know, take that as you will. It just depends what you travel with. But I think for me, it'll be worth it to take on long trips if I have the room. The other thing I noticed is that you are supposed to clean out the filter. There's instructions on cleaning out the filter. Um, I think like every couple weeks or so you're supposed to clean it out. This little attachment comes off and then there's a little filter cleaner that just scratches out any um, like fuzzies that are in the filter down there. So just make sure you're doing that to maintain the health of your Dyson because you did spend a lot of money. If you're gonna get it, you spent a lot of money on it. So make sure that you're maintaining it properly. But I have to say that I think that this is 100% worth it. Not the full price tag. If you can get it on sale, if you can use a gift card, if you can use Ulta points, I would highly recommend trying this. It's definitely a steep learning curve at first. But watch some tutorials, get the hang of it, try all the different attachments, and you'll be surprised how beautiful your hair can look. I've just been so impressed by it. Every time I have my hair curled for um, an Instagram reel, a picture, or if I like go anywhere with my hair done like this, I get compliments on how good my hair looks. And it's just, my hair has never done this before. So yeah, the Dyson Airwrap gets the stamp of approval for me and it's taken the place of pretty much any like tool, hair tool besides my Amica waiver in my collection and yeah, I'm sorry to say, you should try it. 
But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Let me know if there's any info that I missed that you would like to know down below in the comments. I'm happy to help if you're on the fence about the Dyson because I know it is a big purchase and that's not something I take lightly, not for myself or you guys at all. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe and we will see you in my next one. Bye.